most effective tools for learning and for improving procedures is to immediately after an event purposely reflect on what just happened. In NASA, this type of learning process is referred to as pause and learn. In the Army, it's called an after action review. What you're about to see is how these simple techniques can be applied in an ICU setting to reinforce learning and improve the process. The example we're going to show is associated with a high stakes but seldom performed procedure of an emergency reopening of the chest in a post-operative open heart patient. For six years, staff at the West LA VA Hospital tried many tactics to improve team performance in the emergency restaurantotomy procedure in their cardiac surgery ICU. But none of these had significant impact on the time to open the chest or the comfort level of the nurses with the procedure. It wasn't until they had a realistic simulation with evidence-based expectations that they got the feedback needed to identify the real barriers to performance. The ICU nurses didn't know the names or purpose of the OR instruments, nor the order of the steps of the procedure that they had never or rarely seen. What's key to note is that this procedure is time critical. The patient has the best survival rates if the chest is reopened within 10 minutes of an arrest. So there's extreme pressure on the team during this procedure, but yet it's only performed one to two times a year. The feedback from the debrief was thus critical for developing a method where the staff did not need to know the names of the unfamiliar instruments or even the steps of the procedure. Immediately after the mock code, we sat down with members of the team and asked them a series of open-ended questions. These are standard questions that have proven to be effective in a wide variety of debriefs. In the debrief, we asked four questions. What was it that stood out for you in this mock code? What was it that went well that we could build on in the future? What was it that could have gone better? And what advice do you have for the future? To get an understanding of the effectiveness of the technique, we also asked the question, on a scale of 1 to 10, how comfortable were you with the procedure before the mock code, and how comfortable are you now? We're going to show you examples of responses to some of these questions. So what was it that stood out for you most from the procedure last week? You know, the, what stood out my mind the most was the pads and not finding, you know, the male and the female section hooking up correctly. We were all confused and everybody just stopped. We don't stop in codes. The drawers were all, you know, what's first, what's second, what's third. What's the important thing and then, you know, down the, down the line. Well, just the realistic aspect of it. So it gave us an experience to go ahead and cut the wires, uh, go ahead and play with the tools, and know exactly where everything is on the cart. I think we can do everything much quicker. I think this is like a battlefield uh, procedure where you need to be doing uh, one thing after another without even thinking about it. Just doing one, two, three, what do I do next according to the checklist and not really think about it very much. The second question asked is, what is it that went well that we could build on in the future? Everything was here that we usually have at the bedside. The, the cardiac output monitor, the pacer wires, everything like that. Um, the extension of the, the defibrillator uh, pads that worked well, which I've heard before that has been an issue. Knowing that the pacer box was always exactly in the same area that it was before. because yeah, Just to know, like, I, know I know that's where I'm going to dress, that's where I'm going to sterilize, and that's where I'm going to open it all up and give to the surgeon. Really we're organized where, um, where one person is designated to, the, the primary nurse is designated to like the meds and so forth, the secondary, I mean another nurse is designated to bagging the patient. It felt, at first we started off really slow because it felt silly, you know, you feel silly going to like a, a dummy in a plastic doll, but then like I, I noticed like two or three minutes into it everybody started yelling and running around like with an actual code again and we got into it, so I remember at first feeling kind of silly, but after the, like, yeah, like two months, we, uh, it got kind of real. Well, we did well. We were able to open the chest in about, like, from when I heard five to six minutes. The fourth question we asked is a very simple one. And simply, what advice do you have for us for the future? Have you got any advice for Meg going forward with this as to... Uh... No, the, the only advice I think is like definitely let's just, let's just keep doing it where it's like it's something that happens every two months or every every so often just just the repetition, repetition 
is where our comfort level is going to increase. So I think the importance of this is just to the just keep doing it, you know, just so that you understand exactly where everything is, and just switching the roles. So like, today I was up here. Tomorrow I want to be on the card. Next time I want to be on the card. Just just switching the roles where where you know you're not always going to be the primary nurse. Where it's happening to your patient. So just just that. The final question we asked was on a scale of one to ten. How comfortable were you with the procedure before the mock code and how comfortable are you now? Importantly, we followed this up with the open-ended question of why. In other words, what we we're trying to get at is what was it in the mock code that was most effective that allowed you to go from whatever your rating was prior to going through the code to where you are now? If you looked, thought back to before going through the exercise, mm -hmm. right, and you said, how comfortable were you, would you have been had a code been called on a scale of 1 to 10? You know, 1, you know, geez, I'm really uncomfortable. 10, yeah, you know, I'm pretty comfortable doing this. Before the exercise, how would you have rated it? Probably like a 4 to 5. Four to five. After doing the exercise, how would you rate Probably it? Probably 7 to 8, so um, much more comfortable. Like a 3, <laughs> and then uh, afterwards, I'd say uh, 7 or an 8. I feel a lot more confident now. And, and what was it that made you more comfortable? The simplicity of it. Definitely the simplicity of it. Because in the, in the press code, um, it, there's just much more stuff on cards and just the simplicity. It's like the, our focus is open up the chest. Then after that, we're going to go ahead and deal with whatever we need involved. First step being gowning up, masking everyone, and so forth. Second step, setting up the sterile feel. And the third step, dumping all the instruments onto the system. As a result of using these simple debriefing questions, we were able to confirm some of our expectations around effectiveness of the techniques, but we also got new insights that allowed us to improve both the training techniques as well as the procedure. You'll see on this slide below, hey, there are six things that we've got from the uh, debriefing techniques. Those six aren't relevant perhaps to you, um, what is really relevant, one of the key takeaways for us are that these simple debriefing techniques used immediately after the event enhance learning for the staff by asking the simple questions the staff highlight areas where they were uncomfortable and needed added training as well as things that worked well should be enhanced or built on. The debriefing significantly contributed to the development of a new method for assisting in emergency restaurantomy that has decreased the time it takes to perform the procedure from 30 minutes to less than 7 minutes in mock codes. What we hope you've taken away from this short video is three things. First is the power of doing a debrief immediately after an event, capturing the knowledge and insights of the individuals that just participated in the event. The second thing that we hope you've taken away is the power of simple questions. The four questions that we asked, what was it that stood out for you? What was it that uh, worked well? What was it that could go have gone better? And finally, what advice do you have for the future? And then concluding that with the, on the scale of 1 to 10, what was your performance? Those are four, five, very easy questions to, that work well in almost all debrief situations. And the third thing that we hope you took away was the value of doing this. One, for the participants, it actually reinforces their learning. But two, the value to the team that, that's actually designing the procedure and what they were able to take away and how they were actually able to improve the procedure based on these debrief techniques. Yeah,